everyone. This is Zayami from filmfestivalcircuit.com and the Oregon Short Film Festival. And right now we are gearing up for our spring festival, which is going to take place on March 17th at the beautiful historic Clinton Street Theater in Portland, Oregon. And today we're talking with one of our participating filmmakers. Donald Tung is the director behind Home Burial. Donald, thank you very much for meeting with me today. Thank you. Uh, so uh, Home Burial is a great film. It's a very unique concept and it's executed in a very fascinating way. I wanna know what inspired you to make this movie? Sure. So um, there's a little background. I'm a uh, playwright and uh, I've done most of my work in uh, theater. Uh, this is actually my first uh, venture into uh, film. Okay. Um, so a while back I was commissioned to write a uh, play about Robert Frost. Uh, here I'm in New Hampshire. Uh, I live about a mile from the Robert Frost farm where he wrote pretty much uh, the, the largest body of his work uh, was uh, composed there. Um, and so I got very familiar with his work and uh, very interested to see a lot of his poems have a narrative quality. Uh, it's just sort of a dialogue between two characters. Uh, so it just kind of naturally seems like a set up for creating a scene. Uh, totally. And so that was kind of the inspiration and once reading this particular poem uh, about a husband and wife dealing with the loss of their firstborn child, um, which again, just a little back, back history, uh, Robert and Eleanor lost their first child when he was three mm -hmm. years old. So this is a very personal poem for uh, totally. Robert Frost. Uh, and you can see that, that he was definitely uh, working through a lot of the issues and uh, grief that uh, around that tragedy uh, in working through this poem. Um, so just a very compelling poem, fascinating characters dealing with grief uh, and their different ways of processing the grief uh, is really what the con major conflict in the poem is. Uh, so it's very curious to see how it would uh, translate to a film. Um, I will say that I'm not the only one who's uh, had this curiosity. It seems to be some others that have uh, uh, taken on that challenge. Uh, but uh, I was glad, very glad to see uh, it come out as well as it did. Well, uh, excellent. That's that's kind of interesting to see that, uh, uh, you know, upon looking into some Robert Frost works, they have a certain cinematic quality that just uh, uh, emanates. And so you decided to try it out. And I think it works uh, extremely well. But I'm, I'm interested in your decision to uh, maintain the text in full with narration. I think that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. What was uh, what was behind that uh, decision? Sure. Um, I'll say that, you know, in in uh, some people seeing the film have commented how um, they didn't necessarily get poetry in school. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you know, they, they understand the, the beauty of the language and, you know, the, um, but as far as the um, the deep meaning just didn't really come through. And then seeing the film, I had one person say that, you know, now I get it. You mm -hmm. know, now I, now I can really see the characters. I can really see um, what's going on uh, in the poetry. Um, so I really, the impetus was to try to bring the, the poetry to life okay. uh, in, in film. Um, but I also wanted it to be uh, basically the, as if somebody were reading it dramatically, okay. uh, a, a dramatic reading of the poem. Uh, and to understand that in giving it its full text within the film, uh, you're really hearing as if somebody were just reading the poem. Um, but it's not, it's, it's being acted out and then we have, um, sort of, uh, uh, narrator qual uh, sections, uh, which I will say that some people have criticized, you know, it's like, oh, why have this narration, uh, right. going on? Well, it's, it's part of the poem. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Well, I, I think it's, it's really interesting and, and, you know, I think it would work without the narration. I think the meaning would come through. I would work as best a standard, right. you know, uh, a dramatic short film, but it gains a quality for sure. And I think it's cool to maintain mm -hmm. that. I mean, it's sort of experimental uh, by that virtue. Mm -hmm. um, what was the shooting process like for this? I mean, it's cool. You have uh, kind of a period mm -hmm. setting. You've got cool period uh, costuming. What was that process like? Yeah, so that kind of really fell together uh, serendipitously. I uh, had a, a fellow, uh, somebody uh, who I worked with, uh, who was also a filmmaker uh, and had some connection to historic uh, 
facilities within the New Hampshire. She works for a nonprofit that uh, works with New, uh, New Hampshire historic uh, buildings. Uh, and she reached out to the Canterbury Shaker Village uh, in New Hampshire, and they happen to have a particular um, facility that our location that worked well. The, the primary um, focus of the film is a staircase with a window at the mm. top of it. You know, because he says he sees her at the top of the stairs looking out. So he had to have a staircase, right? You know, the window looking out. So um, somebody at the Shaker Village sent back some photos of their schoolhouse uh, location, and uh, and it just worked out well. Our um, uh, production designer went in there, you know, because it's a very um, uh, you know, being a schoolhouse, it's very uh, perfunctory. You know, it's not, it doesn't look like a farmhouse. Right. Um, but she got in there with production design and, you know, really kind of dressed it up and more, worked very, you know, very well. Um, so, yeah, and then uh, it turned out my um, actress uh, had, uh, she's in the very Edwardian period uh, costume. Oh. <laughs> and so she actually had the costumes that we used for the Fantastic. film. Uh, so that worked out well. Um, I get, uh, worked with uh, some local theater groups as far as the costuming for the uh, the male character, and and then uh, worked out you know different things of that. Um, the person that helped me with the location also knew some uh, some uh, DPs, um, directors of photography. Uh, who I brought on board, uh, and they were great. So again, it just kind of just really fell together nicely uh, as far as all the pieces. Uh, I love that. Found the great uh, hair and makeup artist. Um, as far as when we scheduled it for three days, um, we actually ended up only needing uh, two okay. days to get, get all the coverage we needed. Um, though I'll, I will say uh, that, you know, again, this is my first project uh, in the future. I'm hope I, I really feel like I want to spend more time getting more mm. coverage uh, to work with in the editing. Uh, okay, totally. Because uh, I feel like there were some moments where, um, well, like there was like one shot that our director's photography, which again, I did really helped to have some people with experience and know what they're doing in that regards. You know, again, I'm a stage person, I know how to direct right. stage works, uh, but this is definitely a, a totally different uh, uh, medium to totally. work in. Um, he got a great shot over the, over the shoulder uh, from uh, the angle, looking down at the actress sitting at the top okay. of the stairs. Right by the window. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I just like, Oh, I wish I had more mm. of this, you know, to work with, to be able to kind of piece in at certain moments to get a. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel the pacing works well. Yeah. Um, but I think there's definitely some room to maybe take a, a more of a breath at moments, um, because I think it it just kind of flows pretty straight okay. without much of, you know, taking a moment to breathe okay. uh, at times. Uh, so I feel like um, having more footage to work with, it kind of, you know, kind of brought in some moments to where, you know, you kind of like, a, right, you know, just kind of get that uh, that release uh, to kind of think about what's happening and then move on to the next piece. So, um, but I think it answers yeah. your question. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a great takeaway. I mean, very actionable for your next project. And, you know, I do feel like it flows mm -hmm. in a way that is poetry it feels like if someone's reading it there's maybe even a bit of a beat or a meter to the to the feeling but i could see having a little bit of a, a dramatic pause in there or some sort of room that you're talking about mm -hmm. would be cool um mm -hmm. you know to that extent uh, you're a theater director and you were thrown into the world of film and you got to see all these mm -hmm. other uh you know parts of the of the puzzle coming together what are some other takeaways uh, that you have from this process yeah, so uh, as I said, definitely want to get more uh, footage right. next time. Take some time, you know, and really uh, work in the moments. Uh, I think we lucked out pretty well as far as uh, consistency, because obviously things are shot, you know, the same th scene is shot in different angles. Right. And so are you getting a consistent um, performance from your actors? That's going to match right. well as you kind of 
part back and forth. And I think we lucked out pretty well with that. Uh, I feel like, you know, but again, going forward, I think I probably want to, you know, be on, on the safe side and really kind of like take the time and really capture and really look at the previous cut and kind of say, okay, yeah, this really matches and whatnot. Um, I'd say that I'd really want to take more time to uh, look at all the cuts. Okay. Uh, as you're filming, um, my DPs were like, okay, which which take did you like? And then they just kind of marked that take as the take to use for the, uh, for the mm. film. Uh, and that worked for the most for the most part, there were some times where I said, I want to, I want to see some other takes to just kind of get a feel for what uh, might be right. better, a better take for that moment. Cause in the, in, in at the time you're shooting, it's, it's such a hectic right. time to try to really assess, oh, you know, awesome. is this really the best take? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Uh, so that's something in talking to some other filmmakers uh, afterwards that they say, they just sit down and listen and watch all the takes. Right. Know, all, you know, which again can take a lot of time, but uh, I think it's definitely needed to make sure you're really, you know, you got, right. got what you want. Um, so yeah, I, you know, as a first time filmmaker, I think there's a lot of things <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling like uh, sure. definitely can learn and, and uh, apply to the next project. Well, it's an excellent first foray. And I mean, I think there's great momentum there. Uh, do you have another project in mind already? I do. Uh, I'm looking at another uh, Robert Frost poem, okay. uh, again, a very uh, narrative poem called uh, Death of the Hired Hand, Death of the Hired Man. I always misquote that. Um, the, so the, uh, the title is a bit of a giveaway, right. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, also um, a dialogue between a husband and wife uh, on sort of opposite sides of, a, of an issue of a hired man who's come, who's basically come back to them. Uh, to kind of uh, uh, see if he can find some work, and uh, and so he, the husband's not happy about it, and the wife's kind of feeling like you know this guy's on his last leg, uh, and of course we find out later that yeah she's right, but um, so it's an, again a, a very interesting conflict between a husband and wife in the moment uh, okay. dealing with a. Uh, thing and i just feel like you know i'm in the process of trying to find a uh, farmhouse location that'll work uh and um and then casting and all that to, to come <laughs> well that's that's i feel like that's a great project to jump into because uh, you know you're adding another actor it's it's ramping up the the i guess the difficulty so to speak but you can directly apply things that you learned from this and you know uh, as far stylistically goes do you think you'll keep it in the same vein with uh you know kind of i don't know the the uh, what the overbearing sort of window light and the uh, uh, text red and full, or do you have a different aesthetic idea for this one? I definitely want to keep it with the text red and okay. full. You know, I want to keep that quality to it. Cool. Uh, as far as everything else, um, I'm thinking about music actually in this one okay. um, to try to interplay with it a little more. Um, that was one thing in this, the soundtrack, uh, the music uh, soundtrack, uh, and I think works well in Home Burial. Um, I guess the, the thing I'm trying to say is that sometimes music can just be kind of like, it's just thrown on there, you know, and you don't really feel right, like it okay. has any, you want to any connection to what's happening. Uh, I think we did, again, I think we lucked out and it worked well with Home Burial. Um, totally. I just again back up. I'm. Uh, I have a music degree in classical guitar. This is sort of my. Uh, oh, okay. Main artistic Were you playing focus. the track? I, I was not. Uh, actually, it was a thing I found on um, Tribe of Noise. I think. Uh, oh, okay. That website has, uh, has someone from the Netherlands uh, who's actually a, a violin player, uh, and uh, really, really, really love his work. Uh, Hans Troost, I think. It was, mm. uh, remembering correctly um but yeah so uh just want to try to get uh those elements really synced up well um yeah i, I think it's uh, as far as the how it's going to actually end up is is still much right in the air i'm still in the okay. uh, i'm definitely going to have to match what's happening in the poem um 
but I'm feeling like I want to try to expand the, the palette a bit uh, as far as how it's uh, portrayed. So, okay, very cool. Well, that's exciting. You've got some good momentum on this. A uh, great uh, next idea. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add about home burial? Um, no, I hope uh, people enjoy it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it out for the uh, the film festival, but uh, and thank you guys and, and uh, enjoy a great great day of uh, short films there. Well, I appreciate that. And I know people are really going to love this one. It's going to look great on the big screen on March 17th at the Oregon Shore Film Festival. And uh, I can't wait to screen it. All right. Thank you, Zami. Thank you very much, Donald. All right. Bye now. Take care.